The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. My presentation is about structural performance of recycled asphalt pavement, subconsolidated concrete, and this is part of a research program between myself and Dr. Kuder. We are looking at including recycled materials in SAC. I'm the last speaker here, so maybe I will skip through some of the things that you already heard from other presenters or speakers. So in general, by definition, SAC is a high flowable concrete that can spread horizontally and vertically to fill all of the gaps without any separation. And it has many advantages. It has high viscosity, requires less labor, and also has high quality. And it can be used when we have congested reinforcement. Some of the important characteristics that we look for in self constituted concrete, we want to make sure that we have a filling ability so that we want to make sure that the concrete can spread vertically and horizontally and we don't have any honey comp problem. Basic ability, we want to make sure that the concrete does not have blocking from the reinforcement. And segregation, we want to make sure that we don't have any segregation or we have high resistance against segregation for SCC. We incorporated the recycled aggregate, which is the recycled asphalt pavement in this research. And why we need the recycled aggregates? Because we have limited natural resources. And also, we know that the aggregates is a cheap material, but also we have limited resources to want to use some of the recycled materials. And we decided to use the RAP for this study. And also, we want to make sure that we produce concrete that's sustainable. So we included supplementary cementation materials, which are uh, waste uh, materials. So we used some of those. And as we know, they have less impact on the environment when you compare it to Portland cement. So we replaced some of the Portland cement with some of the supplementary uh, cementitious materials. And for SCC design, you want to make sure that your mix is stable because it's a uh, high flowable concrete. So you can do that by using fines or using VMA. So we decided to use the VMA for this uh, research. So this is a research program. So basically we looked at the fresh and hardened concrete properties and also we looked at the durability of the concrete for the control mix and for those with RAP. So this work, that research program will be of importance to this committee, ACI 555, and also for ACI 237, which is the SEC committee. We developed 24 concrete mixtures with a fixed water cement ratio of 0.38, and the ratio between coarse to fine aggregates was 1.3, and also we cast 21 small reinforced concrete beams to assess the structural performance of this new self constructed concrete with RAP. Uh, so these are all of the uh, materials uh, that have be, has been uh, used to, in creating the, um, the self concentrated concrete mixture. So here we use the fly ash, uh, slag, and we use the high range water reducer and VMA. And these are some specific gravity uh, uh, values for uh, all of these uh, materials here. So uh, uh, here in this table, this summarizes all of the 24 concrete mixtures uh, that were used um, in this uh, study. Uh, so the RAP uh, content ranges from 0% to uh, 40%, and we have used 100% uh, Portland cement of some of the mixes. Some other we used 20% fly ash, 80% Portland cement, and some other we used 30% fly ash, 70% Portland cement. Some other we used 30% slag, 70% uh, Portland cement. Some other we used 30% uh, fly ash, 30% slag, and 40% uh, Portland cement. And last we used used 70% uh, uh, slag, 30% uh, Portland cement, and again, uh, the RAP content ranges from 0 to uh, 40%, and here, as you can see, the water to cement ratio uh, was constant, and it was uh, 0.38. So we, we did the testing, uh, as I said, on the fresh uh, state of the concrete, and also the hardened state, and also we looked at the shrinkage as a measure for the durability of the uh, concrete that was produced. So uh, the common uh, uh, tests uh, which are done uh, on SCC, so we did the slump flow test, T50, VSI, J-ring test, column segregation test, which is really hard to do. It's a very physical uh, test. And then uh, uh, hardened uh, concrete, uh, we did the compression, uh, strength, compressive strength test, test, and the common split uh, tension test, and the drying uh, shrinks test for, uh, uh, as a measure for uh, durability. 
So uh, ASTM C1611, uh, this is commonly done on the job site. Uh, so this covers uh, slumber flow, uh, T50, and VSI. Uh, and uh, this one measures the fill filling ability of the SCC. So basically, you measure the diameter in two uh, perpendicular directions, and then you take the average of the concrete spread. T50, this is the time elapsed uh, until the concrete spreads, spreads to 20 inch uh, in, uh, in diameter. VSI, so uh, VSI is really subjective test. So uh, visually, you evaluate if there is any signs of segregation. Zero is the best score that SEC can get. Three is the worst uh, score. Uh, G-rank test, so this one would measure the blocking uh, from the reinforcement. Uh, so basically, use a G-rank, and then you, uh, um, you look at the spread of the concrete, and you measure the diameter in two directions, two perpendicular directions, then you take the average of the diameter. Uh, so you can measure here blocking by uh, taking the difference between the slump flow results and the G-rank uh, results. And uh, if you have a, sp a small value, then you don't have much blocking. And also, you can measure the blocking by measuring the diameter. Uh, I'm sorry, by measuring the depth from the top of the ring to the top surface of the concrete inside the ring and also outside of the ring. Okay, that can also give you an indication if the, if you had any uh, blocking uh, due to the uh, reinforcement. Uh, and then to validate the VSI, which is very subjective, we did the STM uh, 1610. So this is a, a static segregation test. So basically, you cast a column of concrete and you let it sit, sit for 15 minutes. And this uh, column has uh, three sections. So after it sits for 15 minutes, you take the top and the bottom section, and then you would see the, the coarse aggregates. And then you wait the coarse aggregate, which is in the top section and also in the, in the bottom section. And if you have a difference between the two weights uh, of less than 15%, then you don't have um, significant segregation in your mix and that would be acceptable. So this is the schematic of the column, and this is the equation that can be used to, uh, uh, to calculate uh, the se segregation percentage. For the, the compression uh, uh, test, so uh, we use the, the common ASTM C39. Uh, so a total of 12 samples were, we take, uh, were taken out from each mixes, uh, because actually we, uh, we tested at three days, seven days, to just to get uh, an indication of how the early strength would look like, and also we tested at 14 and 28 uh, days. Uh, so we made sure that we test three uh, samples every time we, uh, we do the testing. So the compression test was done using a standard compression test uh, machine, and we did also the standard splitting test by putting a slender, uh, the slender on its side and then applying the uh, load. This is ASTM for uh, uh, 96 uh, drying shrinkage, uh, we did unrestrained uh, shrinkage, STMC 490. So the dial gauge was used to uh, measure the change in the length of the concrete prisms. So the concrete prisms will lead to uh, a wet cure for seven days, and then were taken out and put on a table to uh, uh, air cure for, uh, uh, for the rest of the time. So basically, we, d we, we took measures at every five days for, uh, for, uh, for a period of 100, uh, 100 days. So if you take a look here at uh, the results, so for all of the mixes, they had a very reasonable uh, VSI from zero to one, and that's acceptable. Here, uh, slumber flow. Uh, so you can see all of them had you know, reasonable slumber flow values. For the control mix, which is 100% uh, Portland cement, 0% wrap, it had a, a slumber flow of 28.5. Uh, uh, and then when 10% uh, rap was introduced, I mean, you can see that you even have a higher slump flow, and uh, for 20% and 40%, you had a, uh, also clo clo a higher um, uh, slump flow than the uh, um, control uh, mix. And then when the fly ash was in introduced, you can see also that uh, maybe this, in this case, you have also higher slump flow than the control mix. So, I mean, in general, the slump flow was, uh, was really, really good. When you look at the J-Ring results, maybe you are interested in the difference between the slump flow and the J-Ring results. So you can see that for most of the mixes, the difference between the slump flow diameter and the J-Ring uh, flow diameter was smaller than two inches, okay? For the, most of the mixes, maybe there, were, there are some, a uh, few of them which did not meet this criteria. But uh, for most of them, the difference between the two is smaller than two inches, and that shows that there is no much, uh, not much uh, blocking. And for T50, uh, you had uh, a very reasonable uh, uh, scores, um, but you can see here the 30% uh, fly ash, 
with 20% uh, with fly ash, with 40% rab, has a very kind of high uh, T50. But in general, uh, the T50 uh, readings were, uh, were, um, were good. If you look at the concrete compressive strength, uh, so here for 100% Portland cement, uh, so here you have a, a little bit higher than 5,000 5, PSI uh, for 28 day compressive strength. And when the 10% wrapping uh, was introduced, there was a slight increase in the compressive strength, and th but then later as the wrap content increases, there was a reduction in the concrete compressive strength. Here, for 20% fly ash, it shows smaller strength than the 100% Portland cement. Remember, it was higher than 5,000 PSI. But then as the wrap, I mean here with the 10%, it, uh, it has a, you have a, this reduction and then increases uh, when for 20% and then uh, uh, decreases again for 40% rep. For 30% uh, fly ash, it, it reduces further than the 20%. Um, and then when the 10% was introduced, you had a higher strength, and then for 20% rep, you had a smaller, and then 40% rep, you had smaller. But still, in general, when you add rep, uh, that would uh, reduce your uh, concrete compressive strength, and you can see this trend clearly. Here, 30% slag, this is closer to the control mix, which is 100%. Uh, Portland cement, so it seems that slag uh, improves, improves uh, the, the strength uh, better than the fly ash. Okay, and you can see the trend here. Um, your uh, compressive strength decreases as the wrap content increases. For 30% fly ash, 30% slag may be better than the fly ash, but it's not as good as uh, slag. So we have reduction here, and then as the wrap content increases, as your uh, compressive strength decreases. Okay, and then for 70% slag, this is close to the 30% slag, so, and both of them are close to the 100% uh, uh, Portland cement, and as the rep uh, content increases, as uh, uh, your compressive strength uh, decreases. So here, this uh, shows the comparison between, uh, or the difference between, uh, or percentage of difference between the uh, different mixes and the 100% Portland cement mixes at 14 days and 28 days, as you can see, uh, all of the mixes shows smaller strength than the 100% uh, Portland cement mixes, either in 14 day or 28 day. If you look at the tensile um, uh, concrete uh, strength, they showed similar trend to the uh, compressive strength. Again, when 10% uh, rep was in, uh, introduced, there was a slightly increase, but then this, this, this slide shows here uh, the trend as the rep content increases your tensile strength uh, should also uh, would, would, would decrease. So maybe here uh, it's a good idea maybe to test adding fibers to these SCC mixes and see how this would improve the tensile strength uh, capacity. Uh, for fly ash, you can see also the same trend. And for 30% slag, you can see the same trend. 30% fly ash, 30% slag, 70% slag, you can see the same trend as you increase the wrap content as your tensile strength uh, decreases. If you look at the drying shrinkage, actually all of the mixes uh, showed similar trend, but if I take this uh, here um, as an example, 100% uh, process spent and for 0, 10, and 20, and 40, uh, uh, as, I, as I said, we let the, these prisms to wet cure for seven days, and then they were uh, dry cured for uh, 100 days. Uh, so uh, initially, the, you saw expansion, and then uh, after some time, because I mean we just got these present out of the water, so we saw the expansion, and then after some time, uh, we uh, these started to uh, shrink, so we started to see the shrinkage in these uh, uh, specimens. Uh, so you can see here in general, as you uh, increase the rep content, as your um, as you saw in other presentations, as you uh, as your shrinkage increases, but actually. Uh, you can see maybe the 10% rep did not follow this trend. But in general, this trend can be observed. You can see that trend also in the 20% fly ash. Uh, maybe the 20% rep here would be an exception. Uh, but also you can see here that you have higher strain. You have higher strain with the 20% fly ash. 30% uh, fly ash, you have a smaller strain than 20% fly ash, but the same trend. 30% um, slag, you have the sm smaller strain than the fly ash about the same trend as you increase the rep as your strain increases. And then 30% fly ash, 30% slag, you had a smaller strain than the 20% fly ash by itself. 70% slag, uh, still smaller than the fly ash, and the same trend can be observed for the strain. And then uh, we did the three-point test for the beams, and we observed that uh, actually have uh, 21 uh, uh, of these, but I'm showing you a sample here. 
So uh, we saw that as uh, for well, when you introduce RAP, your, uh, you have a reduction in, in your uh, uh, load carrying capacity. As you can see here, the 20% RAP, I mean, is just showing a different behavior than the rest of the uh, uh, beams. But in general, RAP would decrease your uh, um, load carrying capacity. In general, here uh, for conclusions, uh, we were able to produce uh, SCC uh, uh, using RAP. Uh, and uh, as you increase the amount of RAP, your, con your concrete precipice strength and tensile strength would decrease. Uh, and uh, concrete with a slag uh, showed better behavior or showed uh, more strength than the fly ash. And uh, for unrestrained shrinkage, and you increase, as you increase the lab, the shrinkage would, uh, would uh, increase. And uh, uh, concrete with the SCM experience low, uh, lower strain, uh, uh, lower shrinkage than 100% uh, uh, portent uh, cement. And uh, uh, concrete with 30% slag and also with 70% slag showed similar performance to the 100% portland cement. And in general, adding wrap would reduce your load carrying capacity, the structural load carrying uh, capacity. So, thank you.